Hi and welcome to Maths Class. Today we're looking at the distribution of the sample proportion when I'm sampling from a large population. So in the last video we looked at what would happen if I would have 12 different coloured trains in this cup and I was looking at the probability that one of the trains was green. And so what I found was that after I pulled out one train, let's say the train was green, that changed the probability of the next train being green. Because with only 12 trains, I've now reduced the total number of trains significantly and the number of dr green trains significantly. Now, if I had a million trains in this cup, then pulling out one green train is not going to change the probability that my second train is green in any significant way. So the first um, important thing about sampling from a large population is that the probability of selecting a member of the population with the attribute remains constant. So the probability of selecting a green train doesn't change no matter how big my sample is. Okay, so for example, it is known that 10% of people are left-handed. I want to select a sample size of four. What is the probability that there is one green train in my sample? So the first thing to notice here is that I've got a sample size of 10. So I'm going to write, uh, sorry, a sample size of four. So I write that down. And the probability of selecting someone who is left-handed remains constant at 0.1. Now, this is familiar to us. If I say let X be number of left-handed people in my sample, then X is binomial. And I've got, I've written already that N is four and P is 0 0.1. So that means I can now calculate the probability that X equals one. And I can either use my CAS or I can use the formula. Um, well, I'm gonna use my CAS anyway, but let's just remind ourselves what the formula is. So I've got a sample size of four and I'm interested in choosing one that is left-handed out of my sample size of four. P is 0 0.1, so I've got 0 0.1 to the power of one multiplied by Q, which is 0 0.9, and that's gonna be cubed. Now I pop that into my CAS, I've done it already, and I get 0 0.2916. Of course, my alternative is I can use the binomial PDF on my CAS. Um, and again, I'm gonna use that N is four and that P is 0 0.1 and that X equals one. Okay, so I've worked out the probability that X equals one, but what about the whole distribution? Let's look at what that would look like. So if I've got a num the number of left-handed people in my sample, my sample size is four, I can either have none or one or two or three or four. So this is quite similar in this way to the train example. And therefore the proportion of left-handed people in my sample is gonna be divided by four each time. So zero, a quarter, a half, three quarters and one. So what are the probabilities? I just already worked out 0.2916 for um, the probability of having uh, one left-handed person in my sample. If I use the same probabilities, then I can fill in all these values. So for example, um, if, I wanna, if I wanna work out the probability that X equals two, then I'm just gonna go into my binomial uh, PDF on my CAS calculator. So let's have a look at that. Uh, So I go into main, interactive, distribution, it's discrete, binomial PDF. I'm interested in knowing the probability of choosing two with this attribute. Trial is four and the probability of success is 0.1, 10%. Okay, and I get 0 0.0486. Yep, that matches with what I did. So let me write that in. No. 0 0.0486. Now I'm not going to make you watch me do all of these one by one. So um, just get rid of that. Uh, and I'll fill in the rest for you because I've calculated these already. So our zero probability was 0 
0.0061. Um, the probability of 3 was 0.0036. And 4 was actually 0.0001 because it's just 0.1 to the power of 4. So one of the things you'll notice is these numbers make sense. If I've only got a 10% chance of choosing a left-handed person, then out of a sample size of four, I expect it to be pretty unlikely that I get four left-handed people. And the most likely thing to happen is that I'll have no left-handed people. So I've just rewritten that table um, and I've changed what's in the left-hand column. So you can see that on the previous page, I've written out all these words, number of left-handed people in the sample and so on. I've skipped that first line and I've just got P hat, which is the sample proportion. So in a sample size of 4.25 means one out of four uh, are left-handed and then the probability of each of those happening. Okay, so my what what we can see here is that this is a random variable and this is the distribution and p hat is defined as a random variable where p hat is equal to x in this case x over four where x is the number of hmm, not green trains <laughs> let me fix that no not green trains uh, X is the number of left-handed people. I think when I wrote that, I was thinking about trains for some reason. Um, X is the number of left-handed people in the sample and N is four and P equals 0 0.1. Okay. Now the key thing to notice here though, is that X is binomial. P hat is not binomial. Because remember that X is a discrete random variable um, where all the possible values for X are whole numbers. And that's not the case for P hat. But the link between the, the binomial distribution X um, and the distribution that is P hat, they're very closely linked. Okay, so let's look now at the mean and standard deviation of sample proportion. So first of all, we need to remember something. For a binomial distribution, we're talking again about x now, I know that e of x is n times p, the variance of x is np times 1 minus p, and our standard deviation is the square root of the variance, so that's the square root of np times 1 minus p, which we sometimes write as the square root of npq. It's the same thing because q equals 1 minus p. So. Um, what I need to remember now is that p hat in general is going to be defined as x over n, where n is the sample size. So in my previous example, the sample size was four, um, but of course it's not always gonna be the case. So p hat can always be described as x divided by n because x is the number in my sample with the attribute, and n is the total sample size. So if I make that division, I'm going to get a proportion. So what's E of P hat? Well, that's going to be E of, sorry, it's going to be E of X over N, which is gonna give me NP over n, which is just plain old p. So e of p hat is just p. Now that makes sense. Um, remember though that in this case, p is the population proportion. But it amounts to the same thing. If I know that 10% of my population are left-handed, 0.1 of the population are left-handed. It therefore follows that if I randomly choose one person, there is a 0.1 probability that they will be left-handed. So P is the probability, but P is also the population proportion. And P hat is my sample proportion. So what this is really saying is the most likely thing to happen, the thing I expect to happen, is that my sample proportion will be the same as my population proportion. Now we know that doesn't mean that that is what will happen, 
But it means that most that the most likely outcome will be that e of p that e of p hat uh, sorry that p hat actually equals p, and then the next most likely happen thing that will happen will be that p hat will be very very close to p, and p hat being far away from p will be less likely to happen. Okay, so now let's look at the standard deviation, which I can also call S D of P hat, just to be clear that we're talking about P hat now. That's going to be um, the standard deviation of X divided by N. So that's the square root of N P Q. Oh no, let's call it one minus P over N. Uh, which is now if I take out this square root here I've got root n over n which simplifies to the square root of p times 1 minus p over the square root of n which I can just rewrite as one big square root this is the standard deviation of p hat something to notice here is that my n my sample size is on the denominator it's a square root on the denominator but it's still on the denominator so the bigger n gets the smaller the standard deviation will get now that makes sense if i take a bigger sample then i'm going to expect that um, most of my values are going to be much closer to the mean okay all right when i say most of my values that's going to be my sample proportion all right now um, one other thing to notice here and that is that my standard deviation is often also called the standard error because if I take a sample I really want my p hat to be my population proportion it won't be so we make it clear that what's actually happening here is an error that's down to randomness rather than um, you know something that we want to happen okay moving along why is that there twice I don't know okay so it is known that 10% of people are left-handed if a random sample of size 20 is chosen I need to find a the probability that the sample proportion is equal to the population proportion B well let's read through B and C once we've done a okay so first thing to notice is that I'm still dealing with um, well, first of all, let's define X, let X be the number of left-handed people. Um, in sample of 20. And P hat equals X over 20. I need to be nice and clear when I'm defining things. Um, I always start with that and it's also worth noticing that we're really dealing with two slightly different distributions here there's X which is a binomial distribution and there's P hat um, so when I'm doing a oh and the other thing I'm going to notice then for both of these that n is going to be 20 and P is going to be 0 0.1 and X is binomial that's all important working to write down so the probability that the sample proportion um, that's p hat is going to equal the population proportion that's p now in this case the population proportion um, is going to be 0 0.1 all right so what I'm going to do is use my binomial PDF in my in my CAS where um, I'm using uh, X is 0.1 oh sorry no I need to show a little bit more working first um, sorry I skipped a step first thing I need to think about is the fact that this means what does it mean for X because I can't actually put this into my CAS my P hat I can put my X which is binomial into my CAS so if P hat the sample proportion is 0.1 then that means that I'm going to have 2 out of 20 in my sample and the way that I do that is quite simply 
I take this number here and I multiply it by 20. All right. So if I go 0.1 times 20, I get 2. So I'm converting P into X by multiplying by 20. Um, and therefore I, point, I convert 0.1 into 2 by multiplying by 20 as well. Now I can use my binomial PDF where I'm going to use a value of X equals 2, um, N equals 20, and P equals 0.1. I'm not going to show you that. You should know how to do that. And I get 0.2852. I could have done this also using the formula, um, using this 20 choose 2 times 0.1 squared times uh, 0.9 to the power of 18. I don't know which one's quicker. I think they're about the same. Okay. Part B. I'm going to run out of space here. Uh, let me see. I'm just going to delete what I've done so far. So I'm going to keep that working up above, but I'm going to get rid of this because I need it. I need this space. Okay, part B. Um, I'm now looking for the probability that the sample proportion is within one standard deviation of the population proportion. In other words, that the mean minus the standard deviation is less than or equal to p hat is less than or equal to the mean plus the standard deviation. I haven't worked out the standard deviation yet. So the standard deviation of p hat, I'm going to my formula, um, is the square root of p times 1 minus p over n. So that is 0.1 times 0.9 over 20. And I get 0.0671. I did that one earlier. Now my mean, of course, is e of p hat. And that is going to be 0 0.1 because e of p hat equals p. So I am looking for the probability that 0 0.1 minus 0 0.0671 is less than or equal to p hat is less than or equal to 0 0.1 plus 0 0.0671 quickly do those. Okay. Once again, though, I need to convert it into X because X is my um, binomial, right? X is binomial. P is not. So I'm going to want my calculator. I need X. And to convert numbers in p hat form into x form, I just multiply it by 20. I'm going to write this out. You don't need to write this out. Times 20 is less than or equal to x. It's less than or equal to 0 0.1671 times 20. Definitely don't need to write that line of working. And we get 0 0.6583. It's less than or equal to x. It's less than or equal to 3.342. Now, binomial is a discrete probability distribution. It likes whole numbers. So now I need to think about, I want, it, I want these to stay less than or equal to because when I'm putting my boundaries into my calculator, it includes the end points. If I say, um, if I put my bound, lower boundary as four and my upper boundary as eight, that means four less than or equal to X, less than or equal to eight. So I need to include my boundaries. So the next whole number that's going to um, be bigger than 0.6583 is one. And the next whole number that's going to be smaller than 3.342 is three. See, if I rounded this down to zero and I rounded the 3.3 up to four, I, I would be now looking at less than rather than less than or equal to signs. And I want less than or equal to. Now it's in a format I can put into my CAS. Lower bound is one, upper bound is three. I'll show you just to remind you in case you've forgotten. Um, you can't see that, hang on. 
All right. So I go to interactive. And now because I've got boundaries, it's still discrete because it's binomial, but it's CDF, not PDF. So binomial CDF, my lower bound is one. My upper bound is three. The number of trials hasn't changed. It's still four. Probability of success is still 0.1. So notice that when I go from one to three, the, all my calculator is gonna do is add up the probability that X equals one, that X equals two, and that X equals three. But it's quicker if you get your CAS to do it. 0 0.3438. Okay, let's go back to our page. Oh dear. Hang on. 0 0.3438. I'm saying oh dear because I've just realized uh, you can't see all that. Let me let me move me out of the way. Here we go. Make me a bit smaller. That'll do. Okay. Um I need to shift that now. There we go. Move me a bit more. That gives me space. Okay. So what I've done and it's been a bit of a slow drawn out process is I've gone, um, I've started by working out what my boundaries are when I'm looking at um, the mean minus one standard deviation and the mean plus. I've found what that is as a value. I've converted it into values for X. Then I made those into whole numbers and then I used my CAS calculator just to find the answer. I'm going to do the exact same process when I do C, the probability that the sample proportion lies within two standard deviations of the population proportion. It's the same question, except this is a two instead of a one. I'm going to rub this out again because I'm going to need the space. I'm going to leave that working on the right there because I need to know the mean and the standard deviation. So in part C, what I'm looking for is the probability that 0 0.1 minus two times 0 0.0671 is less than or equal to P hat is less than or equal to 0 0.1 plus two times 0 0.0671. So that's the mean minus two standard deviations on the left and the mean plus two standard deviations on the right. The numbers that gives me is negative 0 0.0342 um, is less than or equal to 0 0.2342. Okay, let's ignore the fact for now that that negative won't work. We'll deal with it when, once we've changed it to X. Multiply everything by 20, I get negative 0 0.684 is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to 4.684. Now I wanna make those into whole numbers. So to keep within that range, the next whole number of course is zero, is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to four. So I rounded my lower boundary up and I rounded my upper boundary down, put it into my CAS in the same way I did before and I get 0.9568. It's worth taking a moment to notice that that's something approximately that we expect. We know that about 95% of values should be within the two standard deviations of the mean. Okay. So that is the end of this video. That's everything that you need to know for now um, about the distribution of the sample proportion.